Alrighty, so welcome to this video. As you can tell by the title, I will be going through the newest feature that Notion has put out for databases, and it's called Database Automations. This will just be a short video explaining one little quality of life example. I'm currently in the middle of moving, so I do not have time to go fully into this video as I would usually, but once I moved and settled, I will make sure to put a more in-depth video out for this. It'll be a lot of fun. Welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and I love Notion. I love Animal Crossing. I just have really been liking sharing little moments in my life recently. That'll all be a part of my channel. If you like any of those things or are interested in how moving is going and how I involve Notion in literally every aspect of my life, <laughs> please consider subscribing. And without any further ado, let's get on into this video. So what are database automation? They allow users to automate certain actions that they would usually have to manually input in databases. So really quick, let's jump around and look at the structure of an automation. So I'm just going to spoiler alerts. But anyway, for pages in this database that is called Habits No Automation, when any of these occur, a trigger, do this add an action. And we'll see later that there's different kinds of triggers, different kinds of actions that we can do, um, and the possibilities are kind of endless. One thing to note is that only users with paid plans will be able to edit and create their own custom automation. What I'm showing here is just a screenshot, a screenshot of Notion's page on automations. The database automations are only available to customers with paid plans and there's limited access. So it's not completely blocked off, but it is very limited access for non-paying users. So with the free plan, you'll be able to send Slack notifications and then you can use automations that are included with Notion's templates, but you do not have the ability to edit these automations. The other thing is that database automations can be created, edited, or deleted by anyone with full access to the database. The only exception to this are Slack automations, which can only be edited by the automation creator. Let's move on to the second best part. Why does it matter? Why would I want to use this feature? Automations in databases can save time and effort by performing repetitive tasks automatically. For example, updating a property when a certain condition is met. So let's say you completed all of the tasks in an entry and now you need to update the status. Instead of going in, clicking, there can be an automation that knows all of these requirements are met, just change the status to complete. Sending notifications or reminders when a deadline is approaching and updating a linked database when change is made to the current database. I think this is super interesting. Unfortunately, I won't get into this in depth yet, but this is one of those things where I'm definitely planning on putting out a full video, full tutorial on how this can be applied to your Notion workspace. And then automatically categorize or assigning tasks based on their properties. Notion's example is when a task is high priority, set assignee to Stephanie Lee. As you can see, automations can help streamline workflows, reduce manual data entry, and allow users to have so much more fun, basically. Let's jump into a very, very, very simple habit tracker. Basically, in recurring templates, there's no option to set the date property to today. You can set the name to today, and I can show you this template. When you hover over it, it says date when duplicated. So this date, it is not set in stone. It will move as the days move, if that makes sense. And then if you set the date to something, there's no date when duplicated here. This can only be a set in stone date that does not update as the days pass. So one way to use automations here, the reason why I do my habit trackers without recurring templates is because let's say I'm on vacation for a week. I don't want a week's worth of empty habit trackers that I then have to delete or filter out with some other workaround. I just don't want them there. I don't want that taking space in my database. Instead of having empty habit trackers, I would just like to inconsistently <laughs> um, put in anything but a recurring template for my habit trackers. Maybe it's a just me problem, but maybe someone will resonate with this. So in this very simple example, let's look at this. Four pages and habits, which is this uh, database. When a page is added, do this. Set the date to today. And you'll see that lovely blue highlighting, but basically you're not setting, if I were to edit this, you can pick a date or you can make the date relatively today. For now, we have the option to set it to now, which I believe will include a time, or today. And the way that it works, I will actually shut this off for one second. When I add a new page, this is the usual how you would do it. It would be called today, but then the date would not be filled up. So I would have to go in, click, click out, close this, fill the date with today. 
I could just come here and do it. But um, either way, it's too many clicks for me. Let's turn this automation on and see how it works. So now that it's active, add date to new page, you can click out of this and you'll see it takes three seconds for the date to populate. So August 29th, 2023, yay. Okay, so it worked. It always works. I don't know why I'm freaking out this time. One thing that happened to me is when I had recurring templates that had no date property set, I would have filters like in this one below here. I have this filter where it's based off of the date property. So when it's this week, if it's not populated, the date property, it doesn't show up here. And I'm like, whoa, where did this go? But now it will just automatically show up because of this automation. So there's no need to set the date property manually anymore. And I think that's awesome. I think that's something very small. It just is one of those little quality of life updates that is just, it makes me excited for what's to come with Notion. Let's look at some other automation combinations. So the triggers come in two categories. There's either a page added or there's a property edited. And then you can pick either any property or you can pick a specific property. Moving on to the actions, there's also, I would say three categories here because the Slack notifications, I kind of count that as its own special little thing. You can add pages or edit pages in the same or different databases, which I think is so cool. The other category is to edit a property in this database. So those are the two and a half categories, including Slack being a half category, sorry. You can see that there's the option to have many databases. And the fun part is that once you're in a database, you can match basically a filter rule to grab certain all tasks in this week and do something to them. That's exciting. You can edit the properties of the different databases pages. I cannot wait to use these in depth, but unfortunately I just don't have that kind of time at the moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's some other cool things to come. Spoiler alert, it involves habits. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought. Let's think of ideas, uses of this feature. I'm always so excited to talk about it with other people and hoping to build like community around this like notion obsession of mine. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.